Hi, today I would like to show you how to how to use uh, GNS3 to simulate switches. Uh, GNS3 cannot uh, cannot load iOS from uh, any catalyst switch, but we can use a uh, Cisco router uh, 3600 series. We can drag it and drop it here. Right click and configure and choose this module. It will allow you to simulate most of the of the things that you can find on a Cisco switch. When you move your mouse over you will see that we got a lot of new ports and there are there are switch ports. Okay? So let's try and Put two more. Okay, do the same. Here. Okay. Here. Okay. Now we take a cable and we connect some ports. So let's say fifteen and. 14 14 13 13 okay and we start our routers give it a while to load and we should be ready to to go what I would like to show you is how to configure VLANs on these switches, how to configure VTP, tweak spanning tree protocol and so on. Okay, so all things that you should practice for instance for your CCN, CCNA or even CCNP exam. Console. Okay, let's try and press enter. Okay, we're in. Okay. run and as you can see we have all these ports available let's make this part here a little bigger show IP interface brief to show my interfaces and as you can see 13 14 they are up yeah because I have two cables going to router 2 and router 1. Okay, the spanning tree protocol should be up and running. Show spanning tree. Uh, on this one we have to type show spanning tree three to have an output like we uh, like we see on a, on a switch. And take a look. We have our root ID and bridge ID. I hope you know what the difference is, but just to remind you, root ID is our uh, our bridge, our main switch in the network, and bridge ID is the the switch that I'm on. Yeah, so I can see that I'm not the root bridge for this uh, for this topology. I have one port that is forwarding and one port that is in a block blocking mode. Yeah, so 14. So uh, this port is forwarding. This port is blocking. As you can see in this output, we do not see if it's a root port on a switch. You would see an, another column uh, that would indicate this value. But it's it's not a it's not a problem. I I'm sure that this is a port that when I follow this cable I will find my root bridge. So when I go to router one, and of course we can verify by typing show CDP neighbor, and I can see that fast Ethernet 14 is in forwarding mode, and I can reach router one. Yeah, let's up to room to one and see what's going on there. Let's make it smaller. Show spanning tree 
breeze and I can see that this bridge is the roof. Why? Priority is the same on all of these switches uh, because I didn't I didn't change it. So the the MAC address will break the tie and this bridge, this switch has the lowest MAC address. That's why it has been elected as a, as a root bridge for this network. And as, as I can see, as you can see, I have two forwarding ports because uh, a root bridge will never ever block uh, its ports as a reward of being a root bridge. Okay. We have VTP as well uh, enabled on these switches, so we can practice some VTP commands. On this switch, uh, when you go to global configuration mode, you do not have a VTP command. As you can see, it's you cannot set domain and so on. What you have to do is to go under VLAN database and do it from here. So here I can type VTP and there is a list of my commands. So I want this one to be a server. It is a server, but I always like to double check. And VTP domain will be yes. Okay. Let's exit it out. And I will go to router 3 and I will configure it uh, with uh, VTP mode client. Yeah? So VLAN database VTP client. On a, Cisco, on a Cisco Catalyst switch you type VTP mode client and this one is just VTP client. Okay, type exit. Okay, what, what else? I need to set up uh, a track between router 3 and router 1 because VTP will not work on, uh, on an access, uh, access, uh, access link. So I have to go under interface fast ethernet and it was uh, 14 Switch port track encapsulation dot one q switch port mode track okay I will do the same on on interface 13 uh, because it goes to router 2 I think yeah that's right 13 switch port trunk encapsulation dot one q switch port mode trunk Okay, just to make sure I will establish the trunk between these two switches. Do the same on router 2. Okay. VLAN database. Uh, let's set it up as VTP client. And go global configuration interface fast to 115 switch port mode switch port trunk encapsulation dot one q switch port mode trunk. Okay. Do the same for 13. I could use a range command, but yeah, it's too late now. Uh, it will be 15, 14, and this is 15. Okay, 
Let's verify. Show interface truck. I can see I have two trunk ports, positive at 14 and 15. Good. Show VTP status. I can see I am the server. I have a domain name. I didn't create anything on this switch, so let's go ahead and do it. Let's create some VLANs. Whatever, it doesn't matter for now. Okay, let's take it out. Show VTP status, and I can see that my revision has changed. Let's go and see if it was replicated around my domain. Show VTP status. Fair enough, as you can see, just arrived. Let's check, show VLAN, and again, it's not show VLAN. It's not going to show you anything, it's show VLAN switch. Okay, and I can see my VLAN. Okay, you can also, because it's it's a router, so you have, to be honest, a layer 3 switch right now, so you can uh, configure as VI switch to virtual interfaces and enable routing on these ports as well. Okay, let's let's check show scanning tree again show scanning tree 3 and let's say I want this switch to be the root bridge okay so I can change the priority for this uh, router let's do it spanning tree for VLAN But you get the point here, and I can change it for every VLAN that arrives primer. Okay, so when I type show scanning tree 3, I will see that I am the root for VLAN 1. Okay, I hope this video was interesting and it will help you to uh, establish and play with switches in GNS3. Thank you.